um, you sign up for, for the Google Drive. So clearly you haven't been using your Google Drive. And uh, we all have access to the Google Drive if you have a Gmail account. Drive. Right, so without further ado, at the end of the session, as I said, you'll be able to implement all of these skills. So, um, when a document is static, that means that it is only edited, editable by you, the user on your PC. And usually, many of our documents that we have on our PCs, that is only editable by us, right, the creator. What we're going to learn today is how to upload these documents, make them live documents, being able to share them with colleagues and then to use them together. That's the idea behind today's session. If you go into Google Chrome and you're on the Google homepage, right? If you see in the top right corner over here, you will see that there is a waffle, right? And I don't know if any of you have ever clicked on this waffle before. We call it a waffle because it looks like one. Simple as that, right? And if you click on the waffle, you will see that there are multiple Google apps. There are documents, there are Google Sheets, there's Google Classroom, there's your Google account, there is your Gmail account. But the one that we will be focusing on today is your drive. Now, the drive icon is the little triangular icon right there. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on that icon and it's going to take you straight to your drive. Right, so this is an example of my drive. As you can see, I already have folders here. Um, I created a document earlier just to play around. And I'm just going to explain the interface of this drive. Now, your drive is basically a storage space. I know we have in the past worked with memory sticks, right? And I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where you're like, I have like 5 million memory sticks and I can't remember, or USBs, I can't remember where I saved my information on. It's like all over the place, right? And uh, we go to work and these, these USBs are connected to all our keys and um, we bring it and you go to go and print something on the PC and you run back and you go and collect another USB and it's like, no, it's on that one and that one and you know, you're just all over the place. The beauty of the drive is that you don't need a USB you don't need a uh, external hard drive you have a drive now on a normal google account you get about 15 gigs storage space but if your school decides to maybe become a google school right and you get uh the google workspace you will get unlimited amount of storage space now on my personal drive right i purchase gigs and it cost me about 29 rand a month to get 200 gigs but as i said if your school decides to go the google route and become a google school then you will then be able to get unlimited storage space and that's amazing right so as you can see i haven't used much of my unlimited space but uh this right here is your google or your your home page for your drive, your interface, right? And as you can see in the middle of the screen, these are my recent documents that I've used over here. And below that are my various folders to help me keep things organized in my life. On the left hand side, you get the options of new, which we'll be looking at today. You'll get what is priority. You will get your drive. You will get shared drives, which we'll touch on a bit later. You will get, um, shared with me that's documents that have been shared with you then also your recent documents your star which is your favorites and then the usual the trash the storage the everything right so i think the most important thing is we do, we want to make things simpler in our lives so the idea is that we structure things properly instead of every time going onto our google chrome um, homepage and clicking on the waffle and then looking for the drive we want to now bookmark our drive so if you see in the top right corner if you've ever bookmarked before 
you will click on the star and it's going to give you an option now there are multiple ways you can bookmark this to make it easier for your life right if you go here to choose another folder you can add a folder if i go back to my google home page if you look over here in the top left corner there is my drive so if i go on and i click on here it will take me straight to my drive and as i said what we're going to do is now we're going to look at how do we upload and manage this world that we are living in and as you've heard probably before you've heard of the cloud i'm sure right and the cloud is where everything gets stored and nothing gets lost the beautiful thing about the drive is that anything that you create on here saves automatically you will never lose it it will always be here it's not going to be on your pc per se right but it will be on your drive so the beautiful thing is you can access it from your laptop you can access it from your phone you can access it from any pc just by logging into your google account so the first thing i'm going to do is i am going to create a new folder for us right because we're going to be working in this folder and what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on new and say new folder uh let's think what can we call this folder there if you've seen that i've now created a folder google training but now here's the thing only at the moment only i can view this folder because nobody else has access to this folder right but i can also share this folder with someone else yeah if you see the pop-up here it says add an expiration date right so i am now sharing this folder with jc but i can now decide do i want jc to be a editor me now let me explain the difference between making jc an editor a viewer and a commenter if you are creating a document or a folder right you want to know that whoever you share this with right they have certain permission rights if you are sharing it for example with your colleague this folder and you are maybe i'm a history teacher jc what do you teach which subject i'm an english educator english and ella okay. jc is english and ella right so let's say jc and i are two history educators right and i want to now share this folder with jc because the idea is i don't want a folder on my pc and a folder on jc's pc or on jc's usb and we are now working separately but we want to achieve the same outcomes instead as the hod i'm not jc's hod sorry jc <laughs> all good all good i'm gonna create a folder that both jc and i have access to but here's the thing do i want jc just to be a viewer do i do i want him to be able to comment right so if jc is a viewer jc cannot edit anything in that folder he can simply just view that folder so this is very very important right because remember this is your property that you've created your intellectual property that you've now created right and you don't just want anybody to have access to this folder or to be able to change what's going on in this folder now because jc is in my department i know we're going to be working together i'm going to make jc an editor meaning he can edit any file that i put in this folder right jc is now an editor and i'm going to say welcome to my department this is not the i don't know what caps okay Welcome to my apartment. Jesse, did I spell it properly? Seeing that you're a history teacher, I'm a uh, language teacher. Perfectly <laughs> correct. But I feel like it's yeah. our department, but it's fine. We'll say my. Okay. For now. for now, it's mine, Jesse. For now, it's <laughs> mine. <laughs> but you are welcome to be here. Right. And I'm going to say, looking forward to working with you. and i'm going to see
Now, on JC's side, JC will have complete access to this folder. Okay. But now, here's the thing. There are many ways to share a folder, to share a document. Now, this is simply the folder. If you can see that little icon with the little man over there, that little man is telling us now, right, that there is someone that I have shared it with. If I click on these three little dots, which says more actions, right, I can go to file information and I can see the details. And it reminds me who I have shared with and i want you to think about that it's very important because that just tells you that it's not restricted to google clients for example um if i'm looking at the activity right now i hope some of you clicked on the link and i said at the bottom general access anyone with the link Right, so anybody with a link, you can now go back to that link and click on that link. You can manage your access. You can firstly make someone a viewer, an editor, or a commenter. But also at the same time, if you are or if you are sharing a link, you can share the link with anyone. You can copy the link and you paste the link just as you would with any other link. Right. Um. So what I'm going to do now is. If I click on new, right? Look at the options that they give me. I created a new folder. Now, if you're not used to working on Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Forms, which I assume you are not used to, you would usually be working on a Word document. Is that correct? If I'm going to my PC, which is now offline, this is now static documents. I'm now going to create a document. Just normal word document. That's the first thing I'm going to do. And now I'm going to look at, you either can upload an entire folder or you can upload an entire file. So we, going to go to upload file so i'm going out of this folder and i'm going to look for this file that i called conversations and there it is right you see it's in my desktop it's a word document and i'm going to upload it there it is okay so and I converted this to a Google Doc, which is not a Word document, but it is something similar. But when you do save it, or if you want to download it, if you look here, just as Microsoft, the normal functions, you can go to download and it gives you the options of how you would like to download in which format, right? You can then re-download it again as a Microsoft Word document. But like I said before, I would recommend not downloading this document. I would recommend keeping this document live because what you can do is you can always print it. You can always modify it in future. And that's the beauty of it. So, so if you've maybe uploaded a PowerPoint, let's say you've uploaded a PowerPoint, for example, and you've saved this PowerPoint in your drive, um, and what you can do is as time goes on, as things change, as you become a better educator, you can edit this PowerPoint and whoever has access to this PowerPoint will still have access to this PowerPoint. That is the beauty of it. So it's not a thing of offline. I now need to create a PowerPoint and now I need to email this PowerPoint to every one. And, and that's, that's the, that's what we've been doing. So if I want to download the folder, right, I will click on download. And very important is that it saves as a zip folder. It's a zipping file. So if I go into my downloads, which looks crazy right now, 
right it will now be downloading as a zipping file the way you can keep documents stored is you create a subject file on your drive that way you can constantly just update policies because the policies are live documents right so so really the world is your oyster with us he said google is fun okay so the problem with documents that get shared with you oh can become a nightmare because if they have your email address they are just going to share things with you that takes you automatically to that folder right so i don't want to go into shared with me to constantly find the folders that jc has shared with me regarding google so what i'm going to do is i'm going to click on those three little dots right and what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to organize and i'm going to add a shortcut it's going to give me options where would i like to find this folder that uh, jc has shared with me and i'm going to click on google training and i'm going to add it there because at the end of the day coming to your shared with me with me um part of the drive can become a nightmare can become chaos i don't want i want to steer clear of chaos that's exactly why i started using the drive i don't want to have to go back here every time to look for it so when i go back to my drive right i want to have access to that folder that he has shared with me so i'm going into my google training and boop there it is it's a shortcut within the folder I actually just wanted to uh, make mention of something that that I can see on Hagen's side that some of us might not have access uh, have have. If you look on his drive, you'll see you first got my drive, and then you have something called shared drives, and then you have the computers and shared with me. If you open up your Google Drive, you might actually not have that shared drive option. Look at my history folder; it has a star next to it. I hope you all see that star. Now, all of my folders do not have stars. That's like making the folder a favorite within the drive, right? So if I want to go back, let's go back to my WCD info account, and I'm gonna go back to my drive, right? So I want to star this folder that we created, right? And I click on the three little dots and I say, organize and i'm going to say add to start so if i don't want to look um for things on my drive and i want quicker access to it and i know it's very very important i'm going to start it's like a bookmark and initially before you know i had the google workspace i was practicing how to share a drive and i could not share the drive right so yaku said many of you don't have this option so this is my personal account and i'm going to share drives this was my plc group that they shared with me in my account i've got google workspace i go into shared drives right and i just want to show you the difference so this is the shared drive when you have the premium google workspace right and i'm going to go back to my personal one this is my personal one right this is not a premium workspace now the problem is is that the new button is not clickable i can't add anything in terms of a shared drive so if you have a personal drive right you can't share on that personal drive right but when i go into my premium account and I click on here and now I see oh look at this it's clickable right I can now share an entire drive so I can create an entire drive on here and I can share it so let's say um google I'm going to create it right and there is my shared drive so i've now created an entire drive just by clicking on new and i've created google this is now a separate drive that i have created right and i can now manage access so you can say what type of documents you want in here you can say you can add certain people i'm going to add jc 
JC now has access to this drive. Welcome, JC. It's great to be here. It's good to see you still here. I was worried now. I thought you left us. Um, and then this just tells us when it was modified. Right. So this is an entire drive that I have created. And the beauty is if, let's make an example. If you become a lead teacher in your subject and you feel very confident in your work and you have a premium Google workspace at, at through your school, right? And you become a Google school. And say, for example, I now create a Google Drive or a Google Drive for history. And I say, you know what? I want to upskill educators around me. I want to upskill the educators in my district, in my circuit. And I'm going to create an entire drive that will have history things, right? And I am now going to manage the access. So here, I'll be able to say who has access to my drive. Okay. So then I can manage the access. I can share this drive with maybe the head of history at another school. Maybe I can share it with, the, with, with my curriculum advisor, right? And it's an entire drive that is now shared with whoever you want to share it with. But as I said before, the drive sharing option right only comes with your Google, your premium google workspace right within specifically a school environment um that i think is, is is important to understand if i look at your shared drives for example when you showed the one the the on your other account where you still have access to this to the one that was created um in settlers what happens with a shared drive is content that is in a shared drive folder is technically belongs to the organization so what would happen is Hagen would have had an, had a Google account at Settlers and he might have had files on his own drive. But 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 when when he left the school and they closed that account, the files also went with him. The nice thing about a shared drive is if you are working in a shared drive, the files that you create in the shared drive, even if the staff member were to leave the school, those files remain available to everyone that is still there. So it is effectively the shared drive is different in the sense that it is owned by the organization and it is not technically owned by the individual whose account it is. So what would happen is if, if we were to create shared drives within the within the um, the WCED.info dom domain and you would add files to that, you transfer the ownership of the files to a different organization. Um, but it also doesn't take up any space on your personal Google Drive anymore. So that's very useful. There's another critical thing that shared drives adds um, that you can't, an option that you don't have in the normal My Drive, and that is the sharing permissions. When you share files and when you share folders, you have the top tier is called the, um, is, is called the manager. So the manager is the only one that can add people to that folder um and and can manage the kind of sharing rights then you have something called a content manager now content managers can actually do everything that a normal editing rights can do so they can add folders they can edit folders they can create or they can add files and edit files and do all of those things but the cool thing is you've also got something called a contributor now contributors can only add files and edit files, but they can't actually delete files. If you've ever been in the situation where you try to implement this kind of platform in a school scenario, you, you might quickly pick up on that sense that the people who are still a little bit slower with adopting Google Drive, they often end up deleting files, etc., etc. Now you can create a space where they can actually only add files and they can only edit those files, but they can't delete them. They also can't create millions of folders. It's just a better way of having a little bit of structure and control in that sense. And then for me, the other thing, again, with our people who, who, who take a little bit longer to get on board, what is unbelievably valuable with the shared drive is the minute I add you to a shared drive, it will appear as one of your shared drives. 
So if you if you are a Google school and you basically open up a shared drive and you add all your staff members to it, they don't need to go look for it in shared with me or go and star it or any of those things. They can immediately what they can do is they can just click on share drives and that folder is there. It's just a very, very good way of adding a little bit more control and flexibility within an organization. And that is why the share drive is available um, in one in in a Google Workspace environment and not as an individual necessarily. But it's great because I can add people who don't have Workspace accounts, so people who only have Gmail accounts, I can still add them to a shared drive. So you might have been added to a shared drive as a teacher, maybe maybe um, someone created a, a, a like Hagen showed now a PLC. So then you'll only see that one shared drive. Um, but in an organization, it creates a very, very, very powerful, effective way of, of managing files. Specifically when people, when new people come in and people leave, etc., all of that file structure, all the folder structure is not dependent on individual accounts. It's the organization's folder and file structure.